today I'm going to be recreating the bullet time mechanic from the game Katana Zero. Katana Zero is a fast-paced, brutal hack-and-slash game. Its bullet time mechanic is fundamental to how the game plays and feels. Today I'll be recreating that mechanic as closely as I can to the original game. I'll be using Game Maker Studio 2 to create the game. The steps I'll take in making this game is starting off I'll recreate the movement of the game. And then I'll add a variable that modifies how fast everything moves, including objects, animations, and sounds. Then I will set it so that the variable, which I named time speed, normally runs at 1.0 or normal speed. But when a button is pressed, bullet time becomes active and time slows down. Then I will fix it so that the jumping, physics, and similar things have the same outcome as they would have as full speed and bullet time. Finally, I will fix bugs and add shaders to the game so it looks just like Katana Zero. The very first thing I had to do before even starting to make the game was to get the sprites. There aren't any online sprite sheets, so I went to the games file with Undertale mod tool, which allows me to go into Game Maker Studio Files, which is the engine that this game was originally made with, and after that I grabbed all the sprites I wanted, booted up Game Maker, and started to work. Lucky for me, I had been working on an acceleration based platformer engine, with wall jumping before starting this project. Acceleration based simply means that the character doesn't run at a fixed speed, but instead speeds up to his full running speed. This makes the game much more enjoyable to control. So, after plugging in the Katana Zero sprites in place of the previous ones, adjusting the gravity and running and such, I had a basic controller. Finally, I added dashing or dodge rolling into the game using similar methods that I used to create the jumping mechanism. So now I had arrived at step 1 and I had to implement the variable that modifies speed. I created this variable and named it John. Uh, I mean time speed. I then applied it to the movement by taking the final horizontal and vertical movement value, which is how much zero will move in that frame, and multiplying it by time speed. I did a very similar thing for jumping, by taking jump speed and multiplying it by time speed. Finally, I did literally the exact same thing to wall jumping and rolling. So now that I had a time speed variable, I needed to make it so that when bullet time becomes active, it changes. That was very simple. I just made it so that whenever shift is pressed, bullet time is set to true. And then I took time speed variable and set it to a lower number. I experimented with different speeds for a while before I found out that 0.5, or simply a half speed, was actually pretty good. Step 2. Now, while that was a good start, you might notice something. Zero only jumps at half the height he should when in bullet time. So to fix this, I made a variable that whenever bullet time is active, Zero's jump height is changed. This means that while the actual height he jumps is actually almost the exact same, the jump speed is half. So the jumps are half the speed with the exact same height outcome. I did the exact same thing to rolling and wall jumping. I also changed it so that whenever the game is in bullet time, the image speed is halved. This means that the object sprites will animate at half the speed it normally would, making the game look like it's in slow motion, and not the Zero is just a really bad runner. Step 3 So next I added a sorted timer variable to the game called Bullet Timer. While well, GameMaker does have pre-made alarms or timers in it, I honestly just like the control and easy use that comes when using your own timer variable. Each frame the timer is decreased by 1, and whenever it reaches 0 you can no longer use bullet time, but when bullet time is inactive, the timer recharges. Next I added UI that looks a bit like a health bar in order to recreate the bar at the top of the screen that Katana Zero uses to show the bullet timer. Step 4, so technically what I have right now is a full bullet time effect, only problem is, it doesn't look anything like Katana Zero's bullet time graphics wise. So let's fix that. First of all I need to look at what the bullet time looks like in Katana Zero. The first thing you notice is that the player becomes a very bright blue and also just about everything but the enemies darken. In order to make the player become bright blue, I first of all tried to use Game Maker shaders. This was confusing and at first I couldn't figure out how to make it work. The shaders made Zero look too dark, so I decided to do some sprite work. All I did was import my sprites to the, my pixel art editor of choice, graphic scale, and put a light blue filter on them. Here's what they look like. Um, okay, one slight problem. 
fading between these two sprites is very difficult. So then what I did was I used the earlier effect of Game Maker shaders. I but I only use these as like the transition frame between the uh, bright blue one and the normal. Also I used Game Maker Color Picker to find the color I needed and applied it when bullet time is active. It took some tweaking, it was kind of annoying, but I eventually got it to work pretty well. Finally, I made it so when you activate bullet time, a black object that covers the stage fades in and makes everything behind it, in our case the player in UI darker. If there were guards or enemies, there would be above this object. And that's all I did to recreate Katana Zero's bullet time mechanic. So to show it off, I built a stage with lots of things to mess around with. So let's see this thing in action. Okay, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, maybe like it, and subscribe for more similar content. But that's it. Bye.